Association, Nebraska chapter number two. We have 36 members. We represent about 45,000 acres. Um, and we would respectfully request uh, in writing, if possible, a description of who this Nebraska Oil and Gas Commission represents. Um, also, we would like a description of the techniques and the extent of the monitoring of this waste water well injection we receive how sensitive the monitoring equipment is, who is responsible for monitoring this well, what depth, what proximity to the casing, what is the casing material made of, how does it safeguard against failure, and how do you detect the casing failure, and what emergency planning procedures do you have in place to respond contamination of fresh groundwater supplies. Um, in an interview in the Garden County News with Director Sidlow, uh, it was reported that the wastewater would be filtered on site to remove chemicals left over from the fracking process before being pumped underground. Now this raises many questions, like how do you regulate this processing filter, or this filter process? when the industry won't release information about the chemicals that are in the water because of uh, propriety issues, what would you test for? How can you re regulate this? Uh, where will these chemicals, these filtered out chemicals, be stored and disposed of? We would like to know if this project is bound by law to comply with the Clean Water Act, with the Safe Drinking Water Act, with the Resource and Recovery and Conservation Act and the Environmental Protection Act. Because in LB 512, Section 18, it clearly states that the EPA Act shall not be construed to apply to any of these wells or holes. We would like an explanation of why they are exempt from the Environmental Protection Act. In closing, we are vehemently opposed to this, to issuing this uh, permit, especially considering the company that is to undertake this project. Um, we feel it's too near the Oklahoma Aquifer, and we hope that you will consider the dire consequences of a failure and what it would do to this immense aquifer. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Scott Melvin. I'm from Bridgeport, Nebraska. I would just like to uh, share some information that I've been researching on these class two wells. Um, basically, research, new research indicates that it's not a matter of if these wells will leak, but when they will leak. And, uh, it all boils, most of it boils down to how well, or how properly is the well operated. A poorly operated well leaks a lot sooner than 
couldn't operate as well. In fact, it poorly operated well can leak within just a few years of its start. In Texas, they found that one third of their class two wells uh, failed structural integrity tests due to poor operation. And that basically had boiled down to uh, a time is money issue. You know, they wanted to get that stuff pushed down the well so fast uh, that the pressure basically cracked the casings of the wells. And uh, from what I've been hearing today in today's testimony, that sounds to me like a real issue with the Terex Corporation. It sounds to me like they have little, if any, experience running these wells. And as the gentleman who was just here before me indicated, you know, the consequences of a leak with these chemicals, or what they call salt water, uh, is extremely dire. I mean, a salt water spill can render the ground sterile for years. And not to mention uh, what, uh, what the water will do to our drinking water. I mean, this, wa this quote unquote salt water is 30 times more dense than ocean water. Uh, so it only takes just a little bit uh, to ruin a lot. And, uh, and out here in the western part of the Panhandle, we may be uh, prime territory for expansion of new wells, uh, but can we really afford to have these kinds of problems uh, affecting our water supply like this? I mean, today's technology, there is no way to clean up an aquifer. That's all there is to it. And uh, like everybody else here, that aquifer supply is not only my drinking water, but my wife's box drinking water as well. So I would encourage uh, the commission to reject this this application by Tara. Thank you. Oh, I have some additional reading if, if you're interested. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. My name is Jean Lashley. I live at 30501 County Road 15 in Mitchell, Nebraska. I gave you some handouts there. That is for those that don't know the area. They have some maps on it of the uh, areas that I'm talking about. I'm here to discuss the impact that 80 trucks going up Highway 29 to the site will have on Mitchell. 80 trucks to the site and 80 trucks from the site. That's 160 trucks going through Mitchell daily on a 24-hour schedule. A truck every min every nine minutes, day and night. Map one shows Scotts Bluff County Fairgrounds. The fair draws people for two weeks during the summer. Uh, there's large projects at the event center. Uh, the event center is located in the fairgrounds. This draws people from all over the U.S. We have the kennel show, the dog kennel show. We have rodeos, farm and home shows, and concerts there. So the traffic from the fairgrounds will go into Highway 26 where the trucks are coming from Wyoming. Then map two, they're right there if you look at them later, uh, map two shows our biggest concern, the school children. The trucks will be turning onto Highway 20 at the Methodist Church and going past the high school every nine minutes, 24 hours a day. Highway 29 is a narrow road. It's only two lanes. There are 310 high school students. Approximately 175 students have student permits and driver's license. The parking lot to the high school is landlocked, and the only entrance and exit is onto Highway 29. The lunch hour at the high school is an open campus. The high school students walk and drive to the cafeteria located in the grade school, which is five blocks away. Remember, the parking lot is landlocked. They'll also be going on Highway 29 again. The high school has weekend events and evening events. September to May, they have the basketball, football, and track. Picture three that I have for you is traffic on Highway 29 in front of the high school on a Friday evening at a football game. Mr. Peters, our high school principal, says there are big safety concerns for our students, as well as big safety concerns for the teachers, the parents, and the spectators. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Nebraska Oil and Gas Commission. <clears throat> My name is Reno Red Cloud. I'm, I'm with the Ogallala Sioux 
tribe, uh, in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. A letter was sent from our, our tribe, the Raw Sioux Tribe, and the Rosebud Sioux Tribe concerning this uh, issue with, uh, I have a letter here I'm going to go over, but I just wanted to give you a little cultural and historical background with the Ogallah Sioux Tribe. I am the great-great-grandson of Chief Red Cloud. Chief Red Cloud was born on the Platte River here in Nebraska in the 1800s. And um, culturally, in our Lakota culture, uh, water is sacred. Many Wachone means sacred water. And there is a water project over that uh, was built from the Missouri River to three Indian tribes in nine West River counties in South Dakota. But our, our groundwater, we get from the Ogallala aquifers. That, that is a, my, my concern, deep concern of the Ogallala aquifers. But I'm going to read this letter that I was sent. Okay, it's to the Nebraska Oil and Gas Commission. Uh, Proposed well by tariffs on the Ogallala Aquifer for the disposal of contaminated wastewater. Dear sirs, we are presidents. This is from our presidents now. Ogallala Sioux Tribe presidents. It was signed. It was a letter. I don't know if you guys seen it. But it was, uh, we are presidents of our respective Indian reservations in southwestern and south central South Dakota, <laughs> namely the Rosebud Sioux Tribe and the Ogallala Sioux Tribe. We represent our tribes in vehemently opposing the proposed well by Terex, a company based in Colorado, to <clears throat> expose contaminated wastewater hydraulic fracking into the well that has immense potential to contaminate the groundwater of the Ogallala Aquifer. The location for the proposed well is right on top of the Ogallala Aquifer. Please refer to the attached map on our, our letter. There is a map that is attached that shows the, you know, where it does affect our reservations. Uh, uh, let me see. The location for the Pearl's Pearl's Well is right on top of the Ogallala Aquifer. Please refer to the attached map. Uh, the Ogallala Aquifer extends from Texas, I mean, yeah, from South Dakota to Texas. Sure. And it is in the northern tip of our Pine Ridge and uh, Ogallala and Rosebud Reservations. The Ogallala Aquifer provides domestic, municipal, and industrial water to over 70% of the population on the Rosebud Reservation and 50% of the population on the Ogallala Pine Ridge Reservation. The, pro the proposed well has the potential to contaminate the source groundwater of the two reservations and jeopardizes the life, safety, and welfare of our population. The mini Wachonia rural water system that serves the two reservations has several production wells drilled into the Ogallala Aquifer. The aquifers we charge from areas in Nebraska, including southern Sioux County, and hence is an extremely sensitive area of the aquifer. We find it insane and incomprehensible that an all out, uh, out of state company can propose such an outrageous proposal to dispose contaminated wastewater into a precious groundwater resource that serves as such a vast area in Nebraska and South Dakota. Uh, what I'm saying is that we are in opposition to the wastewater disposal of our, from our, our respective tribes. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for the opportunity to make a comment. My name is Dennis Miller. I'm from Llewellyn, Nebraska in Garden County. I have a degree in engineering from the University of Kansas. I've served as an engineer in the United States Navy in the nuclear power program, and my comments are um, the idea from an engineer's point of view. And my memory is getting worse, so I'll just read them and give you a copy if I may. Industrial projects, despite the best intentions and some very good engineering, frequently have unforeseen impacts on the environment. Putting lead in gasoline to increase engine life worked well for the engines, but filled the air with a pollutant which had a devastating impact on children. Using high rates of nitrogen fertilizer greatly increased the yields of crops, but also resulted in the contamination of the groundwater. Offshore oil rigs provide crude oil, but a malfunctioning well polluted Gulf waters. These are just three of many examples. The point is, things don't always go as planned or expected. 
No doubt a great deal of good engineering has gone into developing wastewater immersion wells, and there may be good reason to believe they can function safely. But in the world of engineering, there is almost always risk of some type of failure or unknown. The issue then becomes, what is the risk, and how can we possibly correct the problem if there is a problem? The disposal of, the disposal of industrial waste in such a way that it could cause contamination of the Ogallala Aquifer should something go wrong should cause alarm. Water, the vital resource that it is, with ever-increasing demands, must not be overlooked. Considering the fact that the plates in the Earth's crust shift, there is substantial reason to believe that over the life of the waste, there is significant potential for a fault to develop which could lead to contamination of the aquifer. Even if this is 50 or 100 years in the future, it is not acceptable. If anything, the need for good water will become even greater. If a problem should develop, how would it be detected? And even if it could be detected, what corrective action could be taken at such a day? The lesson of the travesty of the contamination from the buried industrial waste at Love Canal, New York, is that industrial waste must be stored in such a way that it can be monitored and corrective action taken should it be needed to prevent the spread of contamination. The philosophy of out of sight, out of mind must not be present in the treatment of industrial waste, especially not when it could lead to something as horrendous as the contamination of the Oval Isle Thank you for coming. Do not approve this. 